I had no idea that there are different categories what programmers do. If you're somebody interested in coding and you want to find out where to start, this video is for you. I had to take the decision what to learn not too long ago. I wanted something that was modern, that has some future, that I can make money with and that would, may, that would be fun to do. And I want to let you know what my thought process was. And this won't be a video like PHP versus Python or something like that. I want to give you a more, let's say, practical perspective of how to approach what you should learn. I realized that coding from the outside in looks always the same. It's always kind of these colorful texts and numbers in the screen of a computer. But it's very, very different what people actually do. It's the same thing as if you would say you would work in a clothing shop, let's say in Macy's or a shop like this, or if you would work as in a coffee shop as a barista. It, from the outside, it looks the same because both are just working in a store. But yeah, the day-to-day -day work they do is quite different. So there are more or less three different types of coders. There is the designer, the front-end developer, and the back-end developer. And we will go over them in this video. All right, I decided to be a front-end developer instead of a back-end developer and learning something like Python. But why is that exactly? I think we have to ask us two questions. Who are we and what is our goal? So let's start with who are we? If you're more, let's say, the creative, the visual, the graphics type of person, you can be a designer. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to program or code. You can use something for your projects or for your work as something like Wix, Squarespace. Uh, but you, it could also mean that you're a programmer too. But more about that later. What a person like this likes is that you can see fast results. So as a designer, you can really see you do a change and you can see your result visually. So that's surely a thing that if you like that, you might be a designer. A thing that a person like that wouldn't like is something that like if you code something and you get these weird error messages, if you're like this creative type of person, you're going to get frustrated with yeah, these errors, these more abstract thinking problems quite, quite fast. That would bring me to the next person, which is kind of this web enthusiast. So if you're the type of person that likes web technology, you want to have, you want to know what's exactly going on behind the curtains, then you might be, yeah, this kind of web enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic person. And that's most probably going to uh, bring you into the range of maybe being a front end developer. So what this web enthusiast would like is structural thinking, building something, building a system. And what a person like that won't really like is, yeah, like this whole marketing design aspect of the web design experience. They're, yeah, they're more of building stuff instead of thinking about marketing and design. So that's how kind of I see the web enthusiast, which is most probably the best fit for uh, kind of this front end developer kind of category. So if you're very, very structured, if you maybe don't like other people too much, then you might be that kind of coder person. You might like that coding is straightforward. There is no kind of gray zone. You either more or less, either it works or it doesn't. And this is one thing you really enjoy about thinking of, about being a programmer. Then you might be that. What people like that don't really like is just the whole against the sales or marketing aspect of building a website. It's just you want to have a job, get it done with your code and that's it. Then you might be the perfect fit for a backend developer. So again, in short, if you're creative or that kind of marketing person, you might really enjoy web design, UX, UI design. If you like abstract thinking and the programming side of web development, then you might be a backend developer. And if you're a person that would enjoy to code, but a little more free flowing than backend, then you might be a front end developer. And if you can see yourself in all of those categories, congratulations, you're what we would call in the programming space, a uh, unicorn. So you're the kind of the guy for everything or the, the girl for everything. And that would be the kind of the complete full stack developer with design and marketing background. And yeah, you're going to have a, a great, great salary if you're that kind of person. Of course, this was very, very generalized and just kind of my theory around the whole thing. But let's continue with what is actually your goal, because that's going to define also if you're more, let's say, in the back end, more in the designer or front end kind of category and what kind of yeah, languages or tools you should learn. So let's continue with goals. 
So I kind of see it in three different ways. I, either you want to be employed by um, maybe one of the fangs. So what is that? Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, kind of like these big companies, if you want to be employed with them or just employed with a regular company that employs backend, frontend developers. It doesn't really matter too much. Like there's a lot of, lot of need outside uh, in the world that which companies need software developers and you're gonna be just fine. So rather uh, invest the time in what, what you like instead of trying to figure out what kind of other like the, the companies outside really, really need because the need is very, very high in the market right now. Uh, then if you wanna be a freelancer, I see it a little bit like this. It's most probably gonna be easier to sell a client as a freelancer, a website, or just kind of these front, more front-end based projects. So I think if you wanna be a freelancer, try to lean a little bit more into um, working or learning as a front-end developer, because I think it's most probably gonna be easier to get to yeah, projects and, and business in, in that kind of sense as a front end developer. And if you wanna build a, a project yourself, maybe an app or maybe a website that generates, I don't know, some, inco some income, then yeah, you kind of have to be a full stack developer. So it means you have to know a little bit from everything. Then I would just start with HTML, CSS and JavaScript and then maybe learn a backend language like Python or uh, maybe even Node.js because you're then already familiar with JavaScript. If you don't know what Node.js is, Node.js is pretty much where you can use JavaScript that you learned in the front end, also in the back end. So that's kind of a, a route I'm taking at the moment. I'm, I see myself more as a front end developer, but I'm also learning Node just so I'm able to buy uh, to build whole projects. So I worked as a designer the last couple of years. I started as a front-end developer a couple of months ago and have some kind of experience with back-end too. I wanna let you know what kind of the differences are between the day-to-day -day work somebody does. Because as I said in the beginning of the video, the, the work you actually do as a programmer, even though it looks the same from the outside, can be very, very different. So if you're a designer, you're most probably gonna work more with HTML, CSS, and the JavaScript you do, so the, the one really program language you do is mostly to style elements. So to have something fade in or to have some animations on the website, which is way, way different how a front-end developer uses JavaScript, for example, where the front-end developer uses it more for calculations, loops, data manipulation with APIs, something like that. So. Designer is a little bit more, let's say, free-flowing type of work. You see the, the fruits of your labor after you click save because you see the elements now fade in or whatever. Whereas front-end, it's a little bit more structured. It's a little bit more kind of this build phase, a little bit, yeah, it's hard to describe, but it's more a structured kind of, of coding in comparison to, to a designer or a web designer. Whereas then the back end is, is, in my opinion, very, very rigid. You search a lot of in documentations, you implement different plugins into your back end, and it's more, more rigid. So the code really has to look like how it should look like, otherwise it just won't work. Whereas as a front end developer, and especially as a designer, you can write code in many, many different, like a thousand different ways. Whereas in back end, of course, you can write it in different ways too but it's just a little bit more rigid in kind of the approach to the work there. I hope this makes kind of, uh, some kind of sense. So I like to see it like that. A designer is somebody that makes the experience or the web experience for the user to whatever goal that the website has. Whereas a front-end developer tells the computer if the person or the user clicks that, then do this. So translate. So a front-end developer is more or less a translator between the user and the computer. Whereas as a back-end developer, you're kind of helping two computers to communicate with each other. So your connection isn't really with a human being. You help computer A or server A um, communicate with the client-side server or with the client-side application or even two back-end servers. So you don't really have, let's say, the contact with the human interaction between the whole web, web developer or website experience. 
So how did I approach with these theories I told you in this video? So I was a designer for quite a while, so I knew that I liked that and yeah, that's already something I did. So I had just to decide between front-end developer and back-end developer. So how I see it for myself is I want to be that connection between the human and the computer counterpart. So for me, that's kind of classical front-end development. Uh, still, as I said uh, in, in the beginning of the video, I still have some um, back-end things I want to, to have so I can um, build my complete websites or projects or applications myself. Um, but yeah, it's very, very limited and I'm, I'm leaning more towards front-end development, uh, development. That's just kind of my, my person. And another thing is also I want to work as a freelancer. And yeah, I think it just fits a little bit better to be a front-end developer if you're a freelancer there. So for me, the, uh, the decision was more or less straightforward. So now it's your turn to figure out if, me, if you lean more towards kind of the design, front-end or back-end uh, type of category. If you're more the front-end type, if you see yourself there, then it's pretty clear path. It's just you have to learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And if you're a backend developer, there's so many different options, PHP, Java, Python, all of those are linked uh, description or a link a video to that in the description down below, where you can see what might be the, the best language for you there to learn. And if you still don't know what you want to do at the moment, then I would just yeah, say start as a front end developer because there's never really Everybody should know what front-end development is, even though if you're back-end, the other way around, not so much. So just start there and once yeah, you have JavaScript under your belt and you know um, how that whole thing works, then I think you have a pretty good idea if you're going to be a front-end developer or a back or if you want to learn more in the back-end. If you want to learn in back-end, again, there's thousands of languages and otherwise, if you still want to stick to front-end, you can learn a lot of um, JavaScript frameworks like React, Angular, Vue or whatever. So I think I see that's the way to go for, for most people if you're still not sure what exactly you should do. I hope this makes some kind of sense. I tried to make it a little bit different video uh, as the ones I've seen now and of what people usually talk about like Python versus PHP or JavaScript uh, against Java or I don't know. It's, uh, I wanted to have a little more practical approach. I want to link you something that really helped me to figure or to wrap my head around this whole big topic of, topic of coding programming, which is great, which is kind of a leaflet or uh, uh, orientation of what web development in 2020 actually is. I think it's a, a great piece of, of information. Yeah, other than that, I just tell, hope that, uh, that the info and the kind of the structure I had in this video helped. If it did, please leave the video a like and if you want to see more videos like that and coding tutorials and all around programming and marketing, uh, subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you in the next video.